It's the Tom Hartman University Book Club. Today we're reading from The Meat Racket, The Secret Takeover of America's Food Business by Christopher Leonard. Uh, this is from the prologue. Uh, it's titled The Hidden King. Nobody ever visits the stranded little community of Waldron, Arkansas. But even if they did, a tourist would never see the place for what it really is. Most outsiders would be fooled into thinking it was an actual small town. On any given morning, the residents awaken and begin their routine along Main Street. Old men park their pickup trucks by the curb in front of the Rock Cafe, which opens early for breakfast. As the cafe's booths and tables fill up, a congregation of old-timers and cowboy hats gathers in a loose ring of aluminum chairs out front, smoking and talking and stubbing out their cigarette buckets, uh, butts in a bucket full of sand. Later in the morning, Chambers Bank in the south end of town opens up, and the tell tellers cheerfully greet customers by name. On Thursday at noon, the livestock auction opens in a cavernous barn on the north side of town, growing, drawing crowds of ranchers who haul steel trailers behind their trucks, with cows staring out between the horizontal slats. In the late afternoon, teenagers park their cars by the gazebo south of the auction barn, proudly displaying their Mustangs and Broncos like big game trophies. These events have a rhythm of their own, the clockwork functioning of a small town economy. But it's all just window dressing. All of it would cease to exist in a moment and have no impact whatsoever on the true Waldron or its true economic reason for being. The real tempo of the town's economic pulse is measured by the coming and going of semi-trucks that roll down Main Street at periodic intervals, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In the middle of the night, tanker trucks full of animal feed rumble past the empty stores and out onto country roads that lead into the hilly terrain that surrounds town. At dawn, other trucks trumble, trundle in from the hills, heaped high with battered metal crates full of chickens that exude clouds of white feathers along the highway. The tempo can be measured in the regular arrival of train cars full of grain and oil seeds that dump their loads at a feed mill that clanks and hums and churns all night. And in the parade of refrigerated trucks that pull up to a slaughterhouse near the feed mill and get loaded with pallets of frozen meat. This is the real functioning of Waldron, Tech, uh, Arkansas, and its true reason for being. This is the heartbeat of Tyson Foods, the nation's biggest meat company. And the Tyson plant on the north end of Waldron is the only thing that keeps the town on the map. Appropriately, many res residents simply refer to it as the complex. That's because the Tyson plant isn't just a factory. It's more like an entire small town economy consolidated into one property. The complex contains its own feed mill and hatchery, its own trucking line and slaughterhouse that covers several acres of land and processes about one million dead chickens a week. The complex is like an economic dark star that has drawn into itself all the independent businesses, an economic dark star that has drawn into itself all the independent businesses that used to define a small town like Waldron, the kinds of businesses that were once the economic pillars of rural America. Of course, tourists to Waldron would never see the Tyson plant, and not just because it sits on the north fringe of town away from Main Street. Visitors are stopped at its front gate and forbidden from exploring its grounds. So a tourist would have to be content to stroll along the sidewalks downtown, observing the fake Main Street, the deceptive array of little businesses that make it seem like a community. This illusory appearance cloaks Tyson's existence all the way from its roots in rural America to the grocery store shelves and restaurant menus where its products finally reach American consumers. The average shopper is usually fooled when he or she pursue, peruses the meat aisle, seeing what appears to be an abundance of choices and products. Tyson brand name wouldn't necessarily stand out with its logo gracing just a handful of products. But the rotisserie chicken slowly turning in its oven, the Bonisi brand pepperoni, the Lady Astor brand chicken cordon bleu, the frozen chicken pot pie, and the right brand bacon all come from the same company, Tyson. And then, and then there is all the unlabeled meat that Tyson floods into the U.S. food system every day. The meat served in cafeterias, nursing homes, fast food restaurants, and suburban eateries where more and more Americans eat their meals. There's a very good chance that any of the meat purchased in these places was made by Tyson. Even if Tyson did not produce a given piece of meat, the consumer is really only picking between different versions of the same commodified beef, chicken, and pork that is produced throughout a system that Tyson pioneered. Tyson's few competitors have resorted to imitating the, the company's business model just to survive. This book aims to explore the vast hidden territory between the remote farms and towns like Waldron, where Tyson raises millions of animals, and the final point of contact where consumers buy the company's meat. Unseen between these two poles is a hidden power structure that has quietly reshaped U.S. rural economies, 
while gaining unprecedented control over the nation's meat supply. Just a handful of companies produce nearly all the meat consumed in the United States, and Tyson is the king among them. The company sits atop a powerful oligarchy of corporations that determines how animals are raised, how much farmers get paid, and how much meat and how meat is processed, all while reaping massive profits and remaining almost entirely opaque to the consumer. Because Tyson and its imitators are based in the geographic and economic fringes of America in forgotten places like Waldron, the company has managed to escape the scrutiny it deserves. While Tyson's operations are remote, the company's business practices affect virtually everyone. About 95% of Americans eat chicken, which means they almost certainly eat chicken produced by Tyson. And then it goes on from there. The book is The Meat Racket, The Secret Takeover of America's Food Industry by Christopher Leonard.